Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. Tonight I came to talk about the person of the Holy Spirit. Come on, get excited. I said I came to talk about the person of the Holy Spirit. Get excited. Jesus walked the surface of this earth. Did signs, miracles and wonders had favor before man and God, walked a life of power, and lived a life of wisdom. And one day, he was about to go. Somebody shout Amen. When he was about to go, he told the people that believed him then. In John chapter 14 verses 16. That I will pray. To the Father. But water. The amplified version says. I will ask the Father. And he will give you another comforter. She will be made. And the Bible says this comforter shall be a counselor. He shall be a helper. He shall be an intercessor. He shall be an advocate. He shall be a strengthener. And a standby. And the Bible says that person will stay forever with you. Somebody shout amen. The Bible says he will stay forever with you. And the Bible says that person is called the spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive. They cannot welcome or take into their heart. Because the world does not see him. The world doesn't see him. And because the world does not see him, it cannot take him. It cannot receive him. He cannot take of him. It cannot work with him. It cannot fellowship with him. Because the world cannot see him. Or know and recognize him. But he told the believer. But you know him. And recognize him. For he lives with you constantly. And the Bible says, and he will be in you. If you're a believer, shout Amen. He said he will be with you. Constantly. Verses 18 says, I will not leave you helpless as often. I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you desolate. I will not leave you bereaved. I will not leave you helpless. I, Jesus, will come back to you. Just a little while now. And the world, he said, will not see me. Any 
anymore. But even when the world will not see me, you will see me. So there are people on this ground who see somebody that other people don't see. There is a God here that some of us see but some people don't see. But as it starts to move, you will see. Somebody said hallelujah. He says you will see me because I leave. And because I leave, you will leave also. Praise the Lord. Somebody said hallelujah. John 16 verses 7. Again, the Amplified. When Jesus was going, his disciples were worried. You're the one who has been healing the sick. You're the one who has been casting out devils. You're the one who has been cleansing the lepers. You're the one who raised Jairus' daughter. You're the one who gave life to the dead. You got Nazareth out of the grave. And now you're going to leave us. And Jesus said, I am telling you, nothing but the truth. He said, I say it is profitable. It is good. It's advantageous for you that I go away. How is it good for us? How is it advantageous to us that you go away? And he says, because if I do not go away, the Holy Spirit will not come. That comforter will not come. That counselor will not come. That helper will not come. That intercessor will not come. That strengthener will not come. Your standby will not come. And because of that, you will not have close relationship with him. But if I go away, Jesus said, I will send him to you. Yes, that you can be in close relationship with him. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. God sent us someone to fellowship with. You are not alone. I said you might feel lonely, but you are not alone. We are not alone. We are not often. God left us the spirit. One day, when the preacher made an altar call and he said whoever wants to receive Jesus come I was 8 years old and I came in front and they led us through a confession prayer and while we were confessing the Lord Jesus a man came in front of me and he was shining so bright and around him was fire all around his body but it was not burning him he was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen I automatically knew that that was Jesus I knew it when you see him you know I said when you see him you know I said when you see him you know 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 and then I touched my friend and ask them, are you seeing what I'm seeing? He was standing a few meters away. 
and they were not. And from then on, I knew that I had a friend who was invisible to the world. But he was visible to my eyes. Every time I would pray, I would see him. I would feel him. But I did not know how to relate with him. One time when I was at university, of course during that time I was awakened in the spirit. So one day at university, I went on the mountain to pray. And as I was praying, I told God I want to encounter you in a way that I have never dreamed of. There is something about a man placing a demand on God. If you're hungry, you will see. I said, if you're hungry, you will see. And if you have seen and you want to see more, you will see. He carried me out of my body. I left my body. And I was taken in a place in the spirit. Up to today, I do not have the words of the things I heard. And after about two or three hours, my spirit was returned back into my body. And I, and I could not move. I could not move. I was carried and put on a border border. And I went to my hostel weeping. Why was I weeping? I had experienced a joy that has no words. I had experienced a relationship that has no words. I had encountered the Holy Spirit beyond words. My whole self was consumed by the presence of Almighty God. And I remember very well. We are born, my I entered my hostel. I don't come up for you. I could not eat. But where we jump? I was weeping. I think I cook my tea. I was weeping. I bet you can cook my tea. And I was asking God. What are you doing to me? Because the tears were not of pain. The tears were of a joy beyond any laughter. I was experiencing one the world does not see. I could not eat food. Because I did not have appetite for food. I slept. The next day I woke up. And the presence was still on me. And the whole day, I was shaking. I was shaking. My whole being was shaking. Because I was feeling somebody. But I did not have words to explain. But he was doing things to me that were comforting. They were strengthening. They were helping. They were revealing. And on the third day, I started to get to my senses, full senses. I had not known what had happened to me. I had not known it. But what I remember in a meeting, in that time, I had an open vision. And God showed me a lady who had a skin disease. The whole body. And I said, there's somebody here with a skin disease. And 
the lady put up her hand. And I touched her. And the Lord healed. It was amazing. I had not yet understood who I had encountered. And I remember I went in a meeting. We are prayer meeting with my friend. And I stood next to about seven or eight people. And when I raised my hand, I told, where is my lover? Where is the Holy Spirit? I missed you. And the power of God hit everybody that was around me. And I, I thought, what's happening? And I went to another place. And I lifted my hands in the same room. And the power of God hit everyone that was around me. And I was confused. Because I had not seen that in the church where I was. The theology I was taught did not explain why people were falling under the power. I never learned it from anybody. And then I fell in love with God. More than I have ever before. Lunch time. I was in prayer. Evening. I was in prayer. Lunch time every day. I was in prayer. Evening. I was in prayer. The university knew university no that if there are people who pray, we had a group of guys who used to pray almost every time. And it's almost as though I felt like I was not the one praying. But there was a helper inside there. Every time I open my mouth, he gets me a turn. And I was wondering why are these words coming out of my mouth. But every time I was speaking those words, life was coming. Wisdom was coming. Understanding was coming. And the power of God started to change everywhere I was. People could not enter my room. Sometimes, because of the presence of God that was around my life. But I knew it was not me. It was that spirit of God that he sent as a comforter, as a counselor, as my strengthener. We saw God. We saw the lame walking in university. We saw the blind see. We saw people healed. We saw people filled by the same person who was walking in us. My mother brought a friend who had stage 4 cancer. And she was going to die. And I told her, you cannot die. Jesus left us the Holy Spirit. And we laid hands on her by faith. And cervical cancer lifted immediately. And then from that time, I just wanted to be with him. I just wanted to be with him. I could sense him when he was somewhere. I could sense him when he wanted to do something. He used to speak to me things about people. That only God can know and no man can know. Up to today, he still does. He's the one that tells me, go lay hands on that one. Jesus is going to heal them. The Bible says, deep calleth them too deep. When I met him, a depth in him called me. Because the Bible says he searches the bottomless things of God. And every time I related with him, 
was a black man called William Seymour. He went and sat outside that classroom while they were teaching the white boys inside. And while they were teaching it, and they were teaching about the person of the Holy Spirit, he was on the stairs of the class writing notes. And because this person I'm talking about is not limited by proximity. And I read about a man called John G. Lake. He went in South Africa when there was a plague. And, and while everyone was dying of a plague. He was helping dead men but he was not wearing a mask. And they asked him, How come you don't fear the fall sick? And John Gillek said, I have the light, which is of God, in me. And they caught germs, viruses, that were that plague and put them on his hands and every germ that touched his body under a microscope died because there was a man which had the Holy Ghost I could speak forever about those great men but every time I read I became hungry thanks be to God but he is no respecter of persons. He is no respecter of persons. He is no respecter of persons. He can touch anybody. He can kill anybody. He can separate anybody. Kulu. Kulu. We don't need another church. We don't need another sermon. We don't need another conference. We don't need a man from anywhere. We just need to get in touch with the Holy Ghost. We just need an encounter with the Holy Spirit. God needs a man. God needs a woman who says to him, I am ready to take it all. God needs a hunger that is deeper than money can buy. God needs a hunger that is bigger than words can say. The question is, are you hungry? The question
question is, are you hungry? When it touches a demon-possessed person, he delivers him. When it touches one with witchcraft, he delivers him. When he makes a cancer, he cuts it out. I read of a man called Smith Wigglesworth. They brought a sick baby that was dying. And he kicked the baby. And immediately the child was healed. He used to drug them men until they walked. Because he knew he was not alone. One time he got a woman and slapped a tumor off her. And the tumor fell down. And the skin of that woman was like of a baby. How can you see those things? How can you hear those things? And stay noble. And stay corporate. And stay cool, come and collect it. Somebody said, I need you, Holy Spirit. Father, I need you, Holy Spirit. Father, I need you, Holy Spirit. There are prophets here. If you're a prophet, he's coming where you are. He's touching you now. If you are a prophet, whether you know it, or you don't know it, He's separating you now. When the spirit plants on us, your soul. When the spirit takes over your soul, you will change. His glory will be revealed when the spirit. And the Bible says that when he is coming to the world, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Why does he then convict the world of sin? Because they believe not on him. Nobody who believes on him will be convicted of sin. Nobody who believes on him will perish. The Bible says, for whosoever believeth on him, he shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That is why we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Because when we believe him, we will not die. When you receive him, he gives you a righteousness that is imputed on your life by faith. You are not right by your own works. The Bible says he'll convict the world of sin. Of sin, because they did not believe on him. But whosoever believeth on him, they justify through faith. He came to give you life. He came to give you hope. He came to give you a future. He came to give you power. He came to anoint you with glory. He came to separate you with favor. He came to make you different. Listen, this person, the Holy Spirit, will separate you. You came a normal man. 
He can anoint you. Right now by the Spirit. I said that his anointing. To heal the sick. To heal the sick. I pray Holy Spirit. Separate them now. 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 Listen. When there are people on this ground who receive the anointing to do what you're seeing tonight wherever you are he's coming right there listen we don't be afraid of him no presence kills a man physically Every presence elevates a man. There are people that fear him. There is no reason to fear the Holy Spirit. Because he comes to change our life. Right now, if you are sick in your body, receive your healing. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. If you're in a wheelchair, walk out. If you have a clutch, raise it up and walk. In the name of Jesus. Thomas, they're living now. In the name of Jesus. Blind people, your eyes are opening now. In the name of Jesus. I see glasses up there. Come. Come. I see people with glasses walking. Come. Come. Blind people. Your eyes are opening now. Those with glasses walk. They are walking. Somebody clap your hands to Jesus. They are walking. That is the Holy Spirit. That is the Holy Spirit. That is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. 
That is what we need in Northern Uganda. We don't need another conference. We need the Holy Spirit. Put it up, Mama, put it up. That's what we need in Northern Uganda. We don't need another conference. No, we need the Holy Spirit. He can change our children. He can change our families. He can change our lives. God is healing. The Spirit of God is moving. Listen, we, there are people right now, the Lord tells you, there are people who ate witchcraft. If you're going to start vomiting it out, you're going to start coughing it out. You're going to start vomiting now. Coughing now. Cough it out. Cough it out. Cough it out. Get out, devil. 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 Deaf ears are opening. Blind eyes are opening. Swellings are disappearing. HIV is healing. If you have HIV, put your hand on your head now. Thank you, Lord. God is still moving. Uh -huh. This gentleman has had a wound on his left leg for 10 years. He couldn't, years. He couldn't walk without a stick. He could not walk without a stick. Right, right now, as soon as you are talking about the person of the Holy Spirit, you receive this healing. Somebody give the Lord a round of praise. Papa, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Put out the stick. Put out the stick. Yes. Was paralyzed on his leg for one week. Right. Put up your stick, Papa. Praise Jesus. Walk. Don't you know walk? Worry. Walk. Worry. Walk. Worry. Walk. Worry. Walk. Yes. For four years, this man could not walk without a stick. For four years. Walk and where? Four years. Yes. Put up your stick, brother. You don't Walk. Worry. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. For three years, this man has not been able to walk without a stick. Three years. He can walk right now. Three years. Three years. Three years. God has healed him. Somebody give the Lord a man a cup of praise. More are getting healed. Listen, if you came here and the Holy Spirit has healed you today, now, put up your hands. Wave like this. He always does that. He always does that everywhere I go. If he has healed you tonight, wave like this. He always does that. If you're all to testify, we would sleep here. That is what the Holy Spirit does. I see another one walking. I see another one walking. Walk in the name of Jesus. Walk in the name of Jesus. Somebody tell me how long she has been walking with it. For seven years she has been walking with the crutch. The right. Seven years. Seven years. Seven years. Mama, put up your hand. Put up your hand. Father, I thank you. Because you have healed her. And from today, her life will never be the same again. Somebody give the Lord a man of praise. Hallelujah. Give me that stick, Mama. You don't need it. You don't need it. You don't need it. Those who have been healed, come and testify. Run quickly. Those who can testify, come now. Swelling has disappeared. Come now. Somebody had a neck, you could not move it. Come now. There's another one walking. There's another one walking. 
There's another one walking. There's another one walking. There's another one walking. There's another mama walk. Do like this. What was wrong with her? What was wrong with her? Oh, for how long? The whole right side was paralyzed. She had paralyzed. For three years. For three years. The whole right side was paralyzed. Mama, give me that stick. You don't need it. Give me that stick. You don't need it. She so needs to take it to the hospital. I will pray, but she doesn't need that stick. She doesn't need the stick. Mama, touch your lungs now. Put up your hands. Father, in Jesus' name, that spirit of infirmity and disease, leave. Mama, you're healed. You're healed. You're healed. Yes, I want to hear. This lady has had hemorrhoids for nine years. Hemorrhoids for nine years. Yes, and she's healed. Another one is walking. Another one is walking. Another one is walking. She's running. She's running. Hemorrhoids for nine years. Give the Lord a man of a prayer. Yes, I want to hear. Twenty years, this lady. Twenty years. Pain and this for twenty years. Twenty. Twenty. At the back. For twenty years. Twenty. 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 She used to have back pains and even the joints for 20 years. Walk, 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 mama, walk. Worry, 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 no worry. pain, somebody give the Lord a mouth of pain. That is the Holy Spirit. Mama, come back. That is the Holy Spirit. He's running. Hallelujah. God bless you, mama. I love you. Yes. This lady's left leg has been training for two years. Two years. Two years. The pain has been there. Yeah. Now it is gone. There's another one walking. Mama got there. Yes, I want to hear. What has God done for Mama? This lady has had pain in her back for three years because of a dead sleep. But right now the pain is totally gone. And you don't have a Mama walk. She's even bending. She could not bend. Mama, mommy, where? Mama, run for me, run okay, for me, run for me. Wedding, wedding, wedding. That is her running. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Tell her she does not need that cane. There's another one there kicking. Get me that lady, get me that lady. Get me that lady. Come and tell me what God has done for you. Oh, what you giving about you? For five years she couldn't walk. Five years she couldn't walk. Five years. Yes. Walk a bit. Five years. Five years. Walk a bit. Five years. Walk a bit. Mama, walk. Make a worry. Walk. Put up the stick. Walk. In the door, man. Walk. Walk, mama. Make a walk. Yeah. Five years. Walk a bit. Five years. Walk a bit. Five years. Walk a bit. Walk. Five years. Walk a bit. Five years. Walk a bit. Five years. Mama is walking. Five years. Mama is walking. The spirit of God is here. Sweet to the magician. Uh huh. This lady for eight years could not hear, but now she can hear. Wait. How many years? Eight years. She could not hear. Now she can hear. What happened to her ears before? I didn't know because when she was still young, from baby class to P7, she was okay. But when she was in senior one to senior six, she could not pick up very well. Tonight, what happened? She told me she can hear. Somebody shout hallelujah. This opening ears. God bless you. Yes, I want to hear. 
I see another one walking behind there. What happened? This lady had back pain for two years. She well. Somebody shout hallelujah. God bless you. Yes, I want to hear. Yes. This lady had an ovarian cyst for two years. A swelling. In the ovary. Yes. For how many years? You felt it go. Totally gone. Give her the microphone. What happened when we were praying? I felt like something was... I don't know how to say this one. Because I'm so happy. I know, even me, the Holy Spirit makes me happy like that. Put up your hand, put up your hand. Holy Spirit, make her more happy. Make her more happy. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to hear. This lady had the back pain for 14 years. She was using a stick. Mama. For 14 years. Mama. Mama. Walk, 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 this lady could not lift her legs for two months because of kidney problems. Her legs were Put up your hand, young woman. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, operate her kidney. In the name of Jesus. There you go. There you go. There you go. Thank you, Jesus. I want to hear what happened. Her paralysis is gone. She was paralyzed. Paralyzed, yes. From where to where? From the top down here. Someone has been healed of paralysis. Somebody said hallelujah. How many years? How many years? Three years. Three years. God bless you. Yes, I want to hear. This gentleman could not see for ten years. Wait. He was blind for ten years. Now you're okay. You can read now. Now you can even read. What am I doing? Hallelujah! Glory to God! You are healed. Amen. Amen. Praise God. This lady had a dislocation for two years. Wait. Do you remember when I say there's a lady who has a problem with her left hand? That is the one. It is healed. God bless you. Yes, I want to hear. This gentleman has had prostate cancer for three years. He feels healed right now. You feel healed. Father, in the name of Jesus, cancer will never be had again. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you, Papa. Yes. This yes. lady, say, her right leg was shorter than the left leg. She feels better. Hey! Wait, 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 wait. Give her the microphone. Since I was born to a shorter than the right one, even the hand. Nice, <laughs> Wow. The leg grew. Somebody the leg grew. She's crying. Wait. Let me ask you this. Did you feel it grow? You felt it grow? I felt it being pulled. Like this. A leg just grew out. with 
prophet. God delivers you. God Shout amen. I want to hear quickly. This lady has had pain on her right leg for three years. So here, God bless you, mama. Hallelujah. Yes. This child could not talk for four years. Give the mother the mic to tell us what did the child say. She spoke and said, I want my daddy. She used not to talk. Not even a one. But today she said, I need my daddy. Somebody celebrate the Holy Spirit. For the first time in his life, he turned to the mother and said, I want my daddy. God bless you. He has had general body pain because of diabetes for five years. Right now, you are healed in Jesus' name. Yes. This lady was deaf for 15 years. Fifteen years. Now she hears well. How can you not love what God is doing? How can your eyes not see what God is doing? Yes, 15 years. Yes, the same lady also because of an accident 15 years ago she has had back pain. And but also also God. Praise God. God bless you mama. Hallelujah. Quickly. Upper body pain five years, she's fine. Praise Praise God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, she's no, no. This lady has had candida for two years. Candida just got healed. Somebody just praise the Lord. Oh, the power of God is gone through her. The power of God is gone through her. Put her down. Tell me the testimony. Ten years she could not work. Mama, walk. Mama, walk. Walk, no, Mama, walk. Worry. Yes, those are the first baby steps. Of ten years. The first steps after ten years. I'm gonna tell you to hold Those are the first steps for ten years. From today, you're going to get strength. You don't need to speak again, Mama. Yes, I want to hear. Wrist pain for five months gone. Praise God. Hallelujah. This lady has been delivered of demonic oppression. Oh, Spirits of madness. Spirits of madness. Wherever you are, leave in the name of Jesus. Another person is going to be healed right now of mental illness. I like to put that in. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. This gentleman has had a swelling for three years. Give him the mic. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
Say yes. Say yes. What did yes do? Yes. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.